Hi everybody, welcome to the December uh, Supper Club. Glad you're uh, together. I hope you're having a good time. Maybe um, not too close to the holidays yet. This is not too crazy. Um, so we're working our way through 12 Steps um, to a Compassionate Life um, by Karen Armstrong. And this um, time we thought we would do the chapter on mindfulness, um, which may be a new word for some people um, or something you haven't thought much about. So um, what does it mean? to be mindful. Yeah. Um, mindfulness is also one of those words that I think belongs to several different traditions. And that's the other interesting thing about it. We typically think of mindfulness with, say, the Buddhist perspective or a different one. So we're going to think about mindfulness, um, not, not specifically in that way, but probably drawing on that tradition and, and think about, for our tradition, what does it mean? Um, one of the most amazing things about being a human being um, rather than being a part of the larger animal kingdom is that we have this opportunity and this cognitive ability to actually step back and watch our behavior to evaluate or analyze or think about or even just to notice and that's really where mindfulness yeah. begins it's the to, to take advantage of the human ability cognitive ability we have to just be able to step back and watch ourselves yeah. Yeah. it's a remarkably simple idea to yeah. just to just yeah. be present to yeah. just watch what's happening and it's remarkably difficult <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> to do this yeah. uh, you'd think it would be pretty easy to do and, and certainly you can do it for for short pieces of time but um, the more I've tried to practice this it's it's, it's a very humbling thing to um, how quickly someone can just come in the office and boom I'm, I'm lost I mean, and then I'm gone for two hours and I go oh okay back well, again what was I doing yeah um, one of the ways that I think about it, of what this means, is we are both the character in our own movie, the, the main character usually, right, <laughs> right, right? everyone else is an overpaid extra, you know? <laughs> right. and so we're, we are the character, it's all about us, right, uh, and that's true, I mean things are happening to our life and that it's, it's fine to think about your life that way. Mindfulness is the invitation to sometimes go sit in the audience for a moment and watch your life, even while it's happening and you kind of move, it doesn't mean you can't do anything while like, you're doing like it. Like a movie or yeah. a video. Yeah. We, we, we get to do this every time we make a video <laughs> right. and watch ourselves. Yes, go back and look at this. Yeah. Sometimes we just don't, yeah. it's too yeah. scary. <laughs> um, but there's a, there's a, it's an interesting way to think about um, your life is to just watch what's happening sometimes and right. it's a disconnection a little bit. One of, one of the things that happens in mindfulness is that it does require and help you be present to the moment or um, present to whatever is around us. And in our theology, of course, we believe that God is always present. I have a beautiful sign in my office that says, bidden or not, God is present. And so being present ourselves to at first ourselves also leads us to be present to a larger presence than ourselves. Does that make any sense? I'm thinking no. I'm present to the hammering that's going on. Oh yeah, there, there is. We, <laughs> we have noises in the building today. Yeah, they're working on the lights. Um, but but that's part of it too, is a, is um, both that, that mystical sense in which God is fully present here and you can sense that aliveness, it's also being simply present to the sounds that are going on, yeah. the people that are moving in and out. Um, you become a little more uh, nuanced in what you're seeing uh, going on with your children or um, you know, your, your colleagues. It's, a, it's not a bad thing um, yeah. even for your, how you're getting through your life. Um, but how, uh, why do we do this? Um, what happens as we're doing this um, is, a, is an interesting question. Um, one of the things that I've found is that I begin to see how repetitive my thoughts really are. You know, there's some have joked, you know, that ninety percent of our thinking is the same stuff. The same just idea just over, over and over, over and all these things. Um, and it's I don't know if it's ninety percent, but it's pretty darn close. Mm -hmm. a, a new thought comes along once in a while, but I'm basically hammering on, you know, oh I gotta get that done. Oh I gotta get to this. Oh I gotta do this. Um, and so that's a you know you can start to take yourself a little less seriously if you're start to see how Every thought may not be the most important thing in the world, right. and you don't have to act on this. Um, right. That's certainly one of the gifts of why we would do, why we would practice this. Mm -hmm. Another thing is to give yourself some information about yourself and to uh, experience what what triggers you. Yeah. You know, what are the things if you're paying attention, in, even to yourself, instead of just having a reaction, you actually can be present to that reaction and see if it has something to teach you. So Jung talked about you know, these complexes that operate in our cognitive 
brain, unconscious, you know, yeah. in our unconscious, and that they are, you know, sort of all this energy that gets collected around certain things, and when we react in a certain way to something that someone has said, or a different person, or a personality, sometimes we're just not very aware of that, and it comes from deep within us, and just stepping aside and noticing, wow, that kind of person, or that sort of some, when someone says something in a particular way, or when I see something, it sends me somewhere. What's that about? And ask, it, you might learn something. Well, know, then you can start that. to let it go a little bit. It right. just, it's, um, and that's how we start to become more compassionate. Because if you're always getting hooked and triggered by all your stuff, it's still all about you. And real compassion is the ability to make let that room, go right. and to make room for another. Right. Um, so this is where we move to this the connection of why she included this I think in right. the book is is the more we are just simply present of what's going on we can be more compassionate to the needs and the uh, what mm -hmm. other people are, need around us um, how do we do this mm -hmm. um, <coughs> me. we do it a thousand times a day you know, it, 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 I, you've got to be very gentle with yourself one thing um, and you've got to realize that every chance is just one more chance to come back to the present moment instead of judging it because you can quickly, the ego wants to, you know, keep you out of this and so it's quite happy to say, oh, well, yeah, you screwed up, well, you just, you know, you obviously can't do this, so right. just stop trying to do this. Um, it's just a very subtle, gentle thing. We just keep coming back. It's a way of calling oneself to, um, you know, it's like you've got a little military commander there in your brain saying, you know, that's always calling you to attention, um, but maybe in a more gentle way and yes. say, you know, remember, yeah. be, be attentive to, to this moment and who you are and where you are. I was flying up and down the stairs last week something and saying, ah, my head is so full. <laughs> and John Kuzma was standing in the hallway and he said, it's just your ego. Yeah. Just take a break from your ego and, um, you know, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> just take a break from all that stuff in your head. And I went, right. So. And that's ultimately, I mean, this is really about faith. Do you really have faith that you don't need to control every moment of your life and, right. and when things aren't going well, that, you know, that you can hold all of that and trust that God is right. here in this moment. And your job really is to show up, be present to who's in front of you, do the best you can in that moment. You don't have to, you know, control everything. Yeah. So talk about maybe for the first question. Talk about your uh, own experience with mindfulness or your own definition. You may find, as we sort of did when we began this, you may not have the exact same idea Language about what it, yeah. mindfulness is. So um, talk about share with each other what it, what's been your experience of mindfulness. And then what are the challenges, uh, if you do, if you've practiced this or, or thought about this, um, what gets in your way? Um, what's the message, you know, I have a message sometimes that goes in my head that just says, this is just stupid. Don't, right. you know, it doesn't matter. Get, some, get something done. <laughs> you know, right. Don't just show up and trust. Um, you've got to take control of the situation. I hear that message. And right. so it can be very challenging right. to do this. And then maybe share if you have practice mindfulness, or even if at this point you are thinking, wow, if I did that, this would happen. What, what kind of rewards would you expect? You know, what, what gift would you take from, uh, from taking this video around a supper table with some of you friends and integrating this into your life, even in a small way? What do you imagine or what have you seen the rewards would be for yeah. that? There's a, uh, I, there is this movement from that controlling side to a kind of freedom and a lightness it's like the moment with John when you went, oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I, actually, I'm, okay. I'm fine. And that's, a, that's quite a gift to have that. You know? It is. Um, so that's the gift of mindfulness, I think. Okay. All right. Okay. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll be back in January. See you then. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.